Okay. Okay. Good evening, guys. Welcome back. Now we are discussing about the general physiology, right? In yesterday's class, we have seen about the cell membrane and the correlated topics. We have discussed about the cellular junctions also. Just as a recap, okay. Just as a recap, just try to answer my questions. Just check yourself how good you are. Okay. Just check yourself, guys. The cell membrane is made up of which components? What are the components of the cell membrane? What are the three important components of the cell membrane? The proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Protein, lipids, and carbohydrates. Proteins are how much? How much composition? Well, what is the percentage of the proteins? The proteins are 55%, sir. The majority, 55%. Okay, 50 to 55% is the proteins. Lipids are going to be 45%, and carbohydrates are going to be somewhere around 3 to 5%. Okay. Next. Now, how many types of proteins do you know, guys? In yesterday's class, I have shown two types of proteins. Two types of proteins, sir. What are the two types of proteins we have discussed in yesterday's class? The integral proteins in the cell membrane as well as the peripheral proteins. Integral proteins and peripheral proteins. Guys, now whenever I talk about the channels, okay, whenever I'm talking about the channels or carrier protein, channel protein, carrier proteins, they're all examples of integral proteins or transmembrane proteins. Okay. And what are the examples of peripheral proteins that we have discussed yesterday? Peripheral proteins, sir, that we have discussed yesterday. So the peripheral proteins are spectrin, ankyrin, okay, spectrin, ankyrin, and dystrophin. Okay, spectrin, ankyrin, and dystrophin. Spectrin and ankyrin defect, okay, will cause dysmorphic RBCs. Okay, dysmorphic RBCs. For, for example, if there is any defect in the spectrin, that will cause hereditary eryptocytosis. Any defect in ankyrin can lead to hereditary spherocytosis. Dystrophin, dystrophin, where it is present? It is present in the RBC? No, it is present in the skeletal muscles. Dystrophin is a peripheral protein that is present in the skeletal muscles. Absence of dystrophin. Absence of dystrophin will cause a Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Okay, in yesterday's class, we have discussed that. Okay. After that, we also have discussed about the cellular junctions. What are the different types of cellular junctions? Just recap. What are the different types of cellular junctions? So, tight junctions. Okay. Adherent junctions. Tight junctions. Adherent junctions. Gap junctions. Okay, and desmosomal, okay, desmosomal junctions are there. Gap junctions are made up of, sorry, tight junctions are made up of claudin, occludins. Adherent junctions made up of cadherins. Okay, gap junctions made up of connexons. Desmosomes, you know, what are the desmosomal proteins? In yesterday's class, we have discussed desmosomal proteins, sir. Desmosomes are made up of different proteins. What are they? Desmoglin, desmocolin, desmoplakin, placoglobin. I have discussed. The cells are attached with the basement membrane. Ek cell hai. Now, this cell it is attaching with the basement membrane, sir. With the help of two structures. The cell is attached with the basement membrane with the help of two structures. What are they? Hemidesmosomes as well as the focal adhesion molecules. Okay. So, all important points we have discussed in yesterday's class. If you know this much, you are ready for your exam, sir. Actually, to be very frankly speaking, if you know this much, you are almost ready for the exam. Okay? From this particular topic. Okay? Next. Having said that, now in this today's class, let's begin with the topic of cyto. Okay? Cyto. Skeleton. Okay? Cytoskeleton, sir. So guys, Suraj Kumar, Kiran, Ansul, Afnan, Mehnaz, good evening everyone. Okay, good evening everyone. Now, just tell me, come on, what is the function of cytoskeleton? Is cytoskeleton ka function kya hai? What, is it? what exactly is the function of the cytoskeleton? Why do we need the cytoskeleton? See, just think like this. Why do we need a normal skeleton? We know the skeleton which is made up of the bones. Our skeleton is made up of the bones, right? So, what is the purpose of the skeleton to maintain the body shape without skeleton you will be just a, a mass of muscle that's it right it will be like a pulp of muscle so we need this skeleton to maintain this shape a humanoid shape okay in the same way cells are also having their shape right okay each and every cell is having its shape who is helping in that shape maintenance of that shape the cytoskeleton cell is also having its own skeleton, sir. Okay, so cytoskeleton the function is 
maintenance of maintenance of shape which shape cellular shape okay size and structure okay size and structure maintenance now the cytoskeleton my question to you i hope you have studied this in your class 11th and 12th i don't know whether they are teaching this or not now cytoskeleton is actually having three components sir okay there are three types of cytoskeletal components what are they do you know guys do you have any idea kiran ansul agarwal mehnas can you tell me the cytoskeleton it's having three components what are they the three components of the cytoskeleton oh cilia and flagella no 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 cilia and flagella they are helping in the movement okay they are helping in the movement of like you know the microbes are in the humans the flagella is there for the sperms in the sperm motility cilia and flagella they are totally different function okay oh my god you know you don't know kiran yadav yes you are true okay so cytoskeleton is made up of micro tubules okay micro tubules micro filaments and intermediate filaments okay so micro tubules micro filaments as well as intermediate filaments these are the three components of the cytoskeleton okay now for exam see for exam what they can ask is the out of these three who is most important and the most strongest the most strongest cytoskeletal component is sir it's the micro tubules i will show them okay i will show them micro tubules they are the strongest okay they are the strongest sir micro tubules not only that the second important point which i want you to know is see our cells will grow right okay our cells will take birth and they will grow okay after cellular division now you are having two cells now this one single cell it is going to grow so which cytoskeletal filaments okay are which cytoskeletal structures are going to grow are going to grow along with the cell okay which means they are not static sir they are not static they will also grow which cytoskeletal components will grow along with the cellular growth see this micro tubules you know this micro tubules they are dynamic the okay, micro tubules they are dynamic sir which means they will grow okay and even micro filaments they will also grow sir they are also dynamic in nature which means they will also grow in size now intermediary filaments they are static which means they do not grow okay whatever were there inside the cell they will be like that only okay now look here sir this is a cell okay now let's take it this as a cell now inside the cell are you able to appreciate this framework this framework which is helping in the maintenance of the shape and structure okay to put it in a simple way dekho guys this, this is the cell cell membrane now here is the nucleus inside the cell there is a network sir there is a skeleton present okay like this all this micro tubules micro filaments intermediary filaments they are all like framework they are they are like a framework giving the shape and structure to the cell okay they are maintaining the size and shape so here look how many types of filaments uh, are there how many types of structures are there intermediate filaments micro tubules and micro filaments this is micro filament now you already know the example so actin actin is an example of what actin is an example of micro filament now some students will start to confuse sir actin and myosin we have studied it in muscle contraction in the topic of muscle contraction is it the same actin sir in the muscle that actin myosin yes they are helping in the sliding filament like you no know, in the helping in the muscle contraction in the muscle also actin and myosin are there but this actin is not that actin this is cytoskeletal actin okay of course structures are same this actin and that actin are the same structures but actin is not only present in the muscles but this actin is also present in each and every cell now what this actin is doing it is acting like a skeleton it is giving the shape and structure to the cell okay so actin is an example of micro filament okay micro filament okay 
Now, you can ask me, sir, like, you know, why the classification into microtubules, intermediary filaments, microfilaments, okay? Based on their size, sir, based on their size, okay, based on their size, the cytoskeleton is actually divided into three types. If you look at the size of this microtubules, the diameter, I should say, for example, imagine this is a microtubule, okay, this is a microtubule, or, okay, let me show you, see, this is the microtubule, so this one. The second one, microtubule. Now, if you look at the diameter of this microtubule, it will be 25 nanometers. Okay, the largest diameter. Okay, let me write here. Microtubules, what is the diameter? 25 nanometers. Okay, intermediate. Intermediate means not less, but it is 10 nanometers. 10 nanometers. Intermediate. And microfilaments, 8 nanometers. So, based on their size are based on the diameter the cytoskeleton is actually divided into three types microtubules microfilaments as well as the intermediary filaments the example of the intermediary filament is actin actin okay simple as simple as that now deco now let's first talk about the microtubules okay microtubules okay Next, guys, look here. Microtubules are made up of what? Okay, the microtubule, whatever I am showing you here, see. Are you able to appreciate, sir, these microtubules, they are made up of two, two, like, you know, two, two color balls, actually, right? So, one uh, dark green color ball as well as light green color ball, okay? So, what are these, like, you know, what are these structures, sir? So, the microtubules are made up of what, actually? The microtubules, they are made up of tubulin. Okay, microtubulin is made up of which protein? Tubulin. Tubulin is a protein which is forming this microtubules. Okay, now I have shown you two colors. Alpha tubulin, beta tubulin. Alpha tubulin, beta tubulin. They are arranging in a concentric manner. They are arranging in a concentric manner and they are forming this microtubules. Okay, let me show you something like this. For example, imagine this is a microtubule. Okay, so this microtubule is made up of what? It is made up of alpha tubulin, beta tubulin, alpha tubulin, beta tubulin, like this. Okay. okay something like that. Okay, now you understood. It's the alpha tubulin and the beta tubulin. So, this alpha tubulin and beta tubulin, they are forming the microtubules. In your first year, okay, what you should know is, in a one concentric ring, sir, in a one concentric ring, how many tubulin molecules are there? This alpha tubulin, beta tubulin, how many are there? 13. Okay. 13 tubulin molecules are forming one ring. Okay. Now, I have explained to you, Sir, with the growth of the cell, as the cell is growing, these microtubules will grow or not? Yes, sir, they are dynamic filaments. They are the dynamic cytoskeletal filaments. Okay. So, they are, as they are dynamic, they will grow. So, now what happens is, let me show you here. As the cell is growing, new molecules, new molecules will add. Okay, new molecules will add. And the cell will, uh, sorry, this Tubulin, it will grow. This microtubulin, it will grow, sir. Microtubules, it will grow. Okay. So, the end, the end where there is growth occurring. Okay. Now, new tubulin molecules are being added and there is a growth of this microtubule. So, this end where there is growth, this end is called as a positive end or positive terminal. Okay. Now, this end where the growth is not there, the growth is static. There is no growth. Now, here, just the molecules are there. Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, like this. So, this end is called as a negative end. So, positive end here and negative end. Positive end as well as a negative end. Now, sir, why we should know this? As a, as a doctor, is there is any importance? Integration. Integration is important. 
So there is a positive terminal as well as a negative terminal of this microtubules which are made up of this alpha and beta tubulin molecules. What is the importance? Importance kya hai? The impo importance is, look. Now, these are actually, they are like bridges, sir. They are like a bridge in a cell. Now imagine, this is a cell, sir. Imagine this is a cell. Now in a cell, they go, this is a tubulin molecule. Imagine, not tubulin, microtubule. Imagine this is a microtubule, like this. The made up of this microtubule, it is made up of, it's made up of what? It's made up of tubulins, microtubule. Imagine, just imagine, it's a microtubule. Now, it's like a bridge, sir. Of course, it is helping in uh, maintenance of the shape and structure, okay. But on bridge, do you know, who, who, like, you know, in your, for example, in your town, if there is a bridge, who is passing on that bridge? Vehicles are passing on that bridge, right? In the same way, in our cell, there are certain things called as a molecular motors. Molecular motor, okay. So, these molecular motors, do you know what they will do? See, the first molecular motor that I am talking here is called as a dynein. Okay, the first molecular motor. Okay, dynein, sir. And the second molecular motor that I am going to discuss is kinesin. So, dynein and kinesin. Actually, these are the motor molecules. Motor means what? Movements. So, if you imagine this is a microtubule, this is the positive end, this is the negative end. See, on this microtubule, do you know what happens? These molecular motors will actually walk, sir. By using energy, they will actually walk like this. Okay, molecular motors are moving like this. Okay, one from positive to negative end, other from negative to positive end. They will walk. Dynein and kinesin actually walk like this. Now, you will get it out. Sir, why they are walking? They don't have any work. See, actually, these dynein and kinesin, they help in transport of the substances within the cell. Within the cell, okay, from this side. For, for example, something have produced over here. Okay, some protein have produced over here. It have to move towards this side. It have to come to this end. Now, do you know what happens? Sir, this... Uh, Substance is going to be transported with the help of dynein molecules as well as kinesin molecules. Okay, on the microtubules. So, microtubules are acting like a bridge on which these molecular motors are going to move, sir. Okay, so now question. Questions in your exam. Sir, these dynein molecules are there, right? Okay. Sir, who are, like, you know, all of you are going to be doctors, right? Okay, all of you are going to be doctors. Now, what we'll write? Your name, in front of your name, DR. Okay, DR, doctor. So, dynein molecule, D for dynein. Dynein moves in reverse direction or retrograde transport. Okay, dynein, it will, do, it will show what kind of movement? It will show retrograde cargo. Retrograde cargo. Cargo means... Some substances have to move, right? Retrograde cargo, sir. Or reverse axonal transport. Okay, reverse axonal transport. Now you will get it out. Sir, e kya hai? what exactly is this, sir? We can't understand what is retrograde cargo. You don't know it. Let me tell you. Retrograde cargo means from minus towards the plus end. Now see, from negative side, see, now dynein molecules will move in this direction. Now imagine this is a dynein molecule. Okay, this is the dynein molecule, sir. Okay, now this dynein molecule is going to move in this direction. From negative end, from the negative end towards the positive end. But who is other molecule? Kinesin molecule. See the kinesin molecule. Let me show you the kinesin molecule like this. Sir, this is the kinesin molecule. Okay. Now, she, like you know, she is walking in reverse direction, okay, something like that, okay. So, this is the kinesin molecule. Kinesin molecule, what it will do? The kinesin molecule, it, okay, sir, just, just, uh, please make a, okay, I have to make a correction. It's a retrograde cargo, it is just my mistake. Retrograde means towards the positive to negative, okay, towards the positive to negative in this direction. 
Okay. So, this kinesin molecule, kinesin molecule, what it will do? Kinesin molecule helps in anterograde carbo. Okay, anterograde carbo. Anterograde carbo means towards the placent, towards the placent, towards the placent, sir. Okay. So, kinesin, what it will do? Anterograde. Anterograde cargo. Okay. Towards the positive terminal. Now, you will have it out. Okay. You will have it out. See, sir. Okay. Now, we understood what is the positive side, what is the negative side. Okay. Anterograde cargo means what? Anterograde cargo means? Anterograde cargo means? Towards the positive towards the negative okay now you'll have a doubt sir what is the importance okay microtubules are there now on the mi microtubules are acting like a bridge on the microtubules these molecular motors are there these molecular motors the dynein molecule as well as kinesin molecule so this dynein and kinesin what they will do they will help in the transport of the substances within the cell okay but what is the importance sir importance is they go Importance is Sir, polio virus. Polio virus. Okay. So now you just guys tell me, sir, how you will get the polio virus? How you will get the polio? Can you tell me? How you get the polio virus? By fecal oral route, if you take contaminated food and water. The polio virus enters into your body. Okay. Rabies virus. Okay. So, whenever a rabbit dog, okay, whenever a rabbit dog comes and bites you, okay, whenever a rabbit dog comes and bites you, now this rabies virus enters into your body, right? See, now the rabies virus actually grows in the central nervous system. Okay. Rabies virus, it will go and damage the Spinal cord, sir. It will, have, it will actually damage the spinal cord. Now, my question to you, okay, I will explain in detail. But my question to you is, look, when a dog comes and bites you, now rabies virus have entered here. Okay, this is the site of entry for the rabies virus. Now, how this rabies virus from here, it have entered into the central nervous system, that is the spinal cord. Spinal cord is present here. In the vertebral column, spinal cord is present over here. Now, how this rabies virus which have entered at this site of like the, the dog bark or the injury, how it have entered into the spinal cord via the reverse axonal transport by using, okay, this polio virus, rabies virus, these viruses, they use retrograde, retro, retrograde cargo. That is who, who is helping in the retrograde cargo? Dynein. So, dynein by dynein. So, now what happens is, you know, here neurons will be there, long neurons, these are the neurons, okay, one single neuron, see, from here, one single neuron, it's going to the central, uh, in, into the spinal cord. Now, this rabies virus, first it will enter into the neuron. After entering into the neuron, by using this the dynein molecule, by using the dynein molecule, it will enter into the spinal cord. It will enter into the spinal cord and causes the damage to the spinal cord. When the spinal cord is damaged, what will happen? Paralysis. So, that's how polio is going to cause the paralysis, sir. Okay. So, polio virus, remember, in physiology, what you should know? Polio virus uses retrograde cargo. Who is helping in retrograde cargo? Dynein. Dynein is a molecular motor. It's walking on, it's walking on microtubules. Microtubules are dynamic structures, microtubules are dynamic structures, they are having positive terminal, negative terminal, okay. Next, this microtubules, what is the diameter of the microtubules? It is 25 nanometers, they are the strongest, okay, they are the strongest. That. Can you tell me any example of microfilament, any example of microfilament? Actin, actin is an example of microfilament, simple, okay. Now, see, look here, what you should know is, Deco, this is the actin, sir. What is the diameter of this actin? Sir, the actin is 7 nanometers, 7 nanometers. Now, actin is made up of what? Okay, see, actin is also made up of the small, like, you know, ball-like structures, right? 
Now, what is this one single ball? Okay, let me write about the one single ball. See, that one single ball-like structure is called as the G-actin. G-actin, sir. What exactly is this? G stands for here, globular. G stands for globular. Now, this all these globular actin molecules, okay, all these globular actin molecules, now they will fuse and forms complete actin. This complete actin, complete structure, it is called as, okay, F actin. F actin. So, what is this F stands for here? The F stands for filamentous actin. Okay, so the single monomer, the single monomer unit is called as the G actin. Okay, G actin, and the complete molecule is called as the F actin. Done. So, microtubule important points completed. Now, for your exams, especially, okay, they will ask on intermediate filaments. Okay, intermediate filaments. Sir. Now, guys, I am asking you, I am now asking you, can you give me any examples of intermediate filaments? Right. Examples of intermediate. filaments okay any examples guys can you tell me any examples of the intermediate filaments shaurya agarwal rishi raj ricky devendra come on guys come on now this is the important area for your exam examples of intermediate filaments any idea Okay, they haven't taught you in your, uh, they haven't taught you in your class 11th and 12th, what are the examples of intermediate filament? I hope they have already taught you this. Say, now, keratin. Keratin is an example of intermediate filament. Okay, sir, so these intermediate filaments don't think they are present in each and every cell. They are not present in each and every cell, sir. They are specific. In certain types of cells, keratin is going to be present, but not in every each and every cell. They are cell specific. So, keratin, if you ask me, sir, keratin is present in which cells? Keratin is present in epithelial cells. Epithelial cells. Okay. So, what are epithelial cells? You know it. For example, my skin cells, these are the epithelial cells. Okay. All lining cells, all lining cells are the epithelial cells. For example, now, you should tell me what is the structure that I am drawing here. Now, guys, can you tell me what is this structure that I am drawing? For example, the, the structure which I have drawn. For example, this. This is a trachea. After the trachea, trachea is going to divide into bronchi bronchioles. You know it. So, now, even here, so these hollow cavities, they are also lined by cells, right? So, these cells, these are the lining cells. Are the epithelial cells. These are the epithelial cells. The epithelial cells forms the linings of the body. Okay, even... The, these are the epithelial cells, right? Now, anyway, sir, now in the epithelial cell, which intermediate filament is present? Keratin, keratin. Now, one more point I have forgot to mention you. Intermediate filaments are the most abundant cytoskeletal structures. The most abundant cytoskeletal structure. The three important cytoskeletal structure are microtubules, microfilaments, as well as intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are more and more in number. They are the most abundant. Most strongest is microtubule, but the most abundant is microfilaments. Microfilaments. The first microfilament that I have discussed is keratin. Keratin is present in which cells? Epithelial cells. Epithelial cells. Now, sir, how this is important? As a doctor, how this is important for me? Now imagine, sir. Now, for example, from this cell, epithelial cell, you know, this is one epithelial cell. Okay. Now, from here, a cancer is getting developed. Okay, a cancer. Cancer means, you know, a mass. Okay, uncontrolled cell division. Uncontrolled cell division is going to cause a cancer, you know it. Okay. So, now here, the cancer. Here is the cancer. Okay, cancers. Now, you should tell me, what is the other name for cancer? Carcinomas. Okay. If, the, if there is a cancer to epithelial cell, cancer that is coming from the epithelial cell, it is called as carcinoma. Cancer of epithelial cell. Okay, if a cancer is coming to an epithelial cell, maybe this 
may be this epithelial cell okay or maybe anywhere sir doesn't matter if a cancer is arising from an epithelial cell that cancer should be called as the carcinoma sir okay so cancer of epithelial cell is called as simple carcinoma okay now now dekho now you don't know see for example try to understand like this okay now i gave you a cancer okay i gave you a cancer biopsy i biopsy sir means from a cancer i have taken a small tissue okay i have taken a small tissue and i have given it to you now you want to know whether this cancer is arising from epithelial cell or is it arising from some connective tissue cell you don't know you don't know it but if you want to put confirmation that so this is the cancer that have arisen from the epithelial cell how you can do that sir in the epithelial cells who is there keratin filaments will be there so if a cancer is showing keratin filaments inside the cells okay there is a cancer now in the cells in the cell in one single cell if keratin filaments are present means so you can understand aha uh, okay this cancer have originated from epithelial cells okay you understood so like that so this keratin it's a marker of what it's a marker of carcinomas okay this is the mcq what is the marker of squamous cell carcinoma of lung what is the marker of squamous cell carcinoma of urinary bladder or something like that okay squamous cell carcinoma of esophagus so in all carcinomas the marker is going to be keratin what is keratin keratin is a intermediate filament okay next next skeletal uh, next intermediate filament that i am going to discuss is desmin see this desmin it is present in epithelial cells no this desmin present in skeletal muscles Okay, they are present in the skeletal muscles. Now, try to understand like this: if there is a, a cancer that is occurring to a muscle, cancer that is happening to a muscle, skeletal muscle, for example, then it is called as rhabdomyosarcoma. Rhabdomyo means skeletal muscle. Rhabdo means striation, skeletal muscle. Okay, so this desmin it is present in the skeletal muscles. Okay, now if the question something they will ask you if the, if the question that The, the the question that that can come in your exam is what is the marker of rhabdomyosarcoma not carcinoma sarcoma sarcoma is a cancer of now is mesenchymal cells that's a muscle okay so the marker of rhabdo myo sarcoma what is the marker the desmin desmin is the answer desmin is present in the skeletal muscles so rhabdomyosarcoma is the cancer of skeletal muscles okay so in this rhabdomyosarcomas the patient uh, the cells are going to show the desmin the cells will be positive for the desmin next gfap so those students already fun mode those students like you know fun mode varun kashyap okay afnan mehnas ansul guys can you tell me what is gfap guys can you tell me what is gfap glial fibrillary okay glial fibrillary okay acidic protein so this glial fibrillary acidic protein what exactly is this gfap so this gfap is also an intermediate filament it's also a type of intermediate filament present where so it is present in it is present in astrocytes it's present in the astrocytes which cells they are present in astrocytes specifically they are present in astrocytes now from your class 11th and 12th okay if if you if you guys are like you know from your first year just tell me so what exactly are the astrocytes what is the function of astrocytes can you guys tell me hey, astrocytes kya hai what is the function of astrocytes any idea guys come on come on Guys, be active. Be active. Okay, you should not be lazy. Okay, doctor should be active. Okay, 
don't think that the doc should, doctor should be like, you know, calm and relax. No, he should be active, sir. Okay. So, GFAP, glial fibrillary acidic protein. It's an intermediary filament present in the astrocytes. What is the function of astrocytes? A astrocyte. Yes, Rithik, you are true. Tusha, you are true. It is, it is, yes, of course, it's a glial cell. It's a glial cell. It forms blood, brain, barrier. It forms a blood-brain barrier, BBB, okay. So, it separates, okay, it separates the, the environment, the brain environment, okay, or I should say, like, you know, you will study this in your anatomy, I don't want to go into the anatomy, my thing is like, you know, the physiology thing, okay, the cerebral blood vessels are having this, like, you know, astrocytes, these astrocytes actually forms a blood-brain barrier, okay, so that the toxic substances from the brain will not enter into the, should not enter into the brain okay it forms a barrier so barrier means like a gate gate it does not allow the toxins or any substances from the blood into the brain okay now you should tell me you should tell me think logically and tell me sir this gfap it is a marker the gfap real fibrillary acidic protein it's a marker of which type of cancer you can you tell me can you guess think logically and tell me sir gfap it is present in astrocytes so, cancer of astrocytes or the tumor, tumor of astrocytes. What is that called as? The tumor of astrocytes is called as astrocytoma. Astrocytoma. Okay, it's astrocytoma. So, for all these astrocytomas, the tumor marker is going to be glial fibrillary stick protein. Okay, and the last one, the last intermediate filament which I want you to know, which was also tested in many exams, it is called as a Vimentin. Okay, Vimentin, sir, Vimentin. Okay, so this Vimentin, it is present in which cells? They are present in fibroblast. Okay, now my question to you, sir, what is the function of fibroblast? If, if fibroblast, is kya hai? what exactly they are going to do? Fibroblast. They are present everywhere in our connective tissue. Okay, they are present everywhere in the connective tissue, sir. A fibroblast ka function kya hai? Production of fibers. Which fibers? Collagen. Deposition of the collagen. Okay, collagen deposition. Okay, collagen deposition, sir. Fibroblast. Okay, helping the formation of, like, you know, scar also. Whenever you are having some injury, the fibroblasts are going to produce so much collagen and forms the scar tissue. Scar. Okay, the scar is nothing but the collagen, right? So, we maintain one important point, it is present in the fibroblast, that's it, okay, Done. now, in MBBS, okay, in MBBS, you should know, one important point for the, like, you know, uh, fibroblast, especially, this is a question for the second year student, if there is any second year student uh, in the chat, you just answer me, you have studied your pathology, right, now, what is something important about the fibroblast, what is something important about the fibroblast? Our body may a fibroblast ka, what is the importance of fibroblast in pathology, especially in the topic of cell injury? In the topic of cell injury, sir. What is something important about the fibroblast? Can you tell me? Tushar, Anshul. What is something important about the fibroblast? See, now imagine, imagine like this. You are stopping oxygen supply to me. Okay? You, you don't like me. Okay, you don't like me. Because I am not touching good, for example, and you want to kill me. So, what you are going to do is you are going to cut down the oxygen. So, what happened to the oxygen levels in my body? Hypoxia. Now, hypoxia is going to occur. See, whenever there is hypoxia in my body, whenever the oxygen is not there in my body, so which cells are going to die first? Which cells are most susceptible for hypoxia? Brain, neurons. Neurons are highly susceptible, sir. Okay, neurons are highly susceptible for the hypoxia. Okay? But which cells are highly, highly resistant? First year you should know. Okay. Say fibroblast are highly, good evening fun mode, highly resistant. Okay. So fibroblast are highly resistant for hypoxia. Okay. So fibroblast are highly resistant for the hypoxia. So means even though you don't give oxygen, they will survive for longer duration. Okay, they will survive for longer duration. Okay, these are some important points which I want you to know. Okay, especially in your first year. This is the basic, sir. I am not going in detail, 
but highly like you know how you should study the topics what they will ask you in your exams that i have discussed right? because these are not the regular classes right okay so basics i am keeping it to the basics okay this is what you should know okay now let's take a break of 5 minutes okay 5 minutes let's take a break small break okay i just need to take a sip of water in 5 minutes let's continue the topic of membrane transport how the substances are going to be transported into the cell and out of the cell okay we'll discuss that in the next 5 minutes break break
okay okay welcome back guys now let's continue the topic what we have discussed so far we have completed the cell membrane topic we have completed the junctional complexes also also we have completed the cytoskeleton okay we have completed the cytoskeleton also okay see before going okay before going to enter into the mbbs okay you should know these basic things so don't think these are just the basics sir we have covered also those topics which will be important in the exams okay so these are all the orientation classes so that you know how you have to study okay for the exams how you have to study for your fmg exam or how you have to study for your next exam okay so these are the classes which are orienting you okay they will give you an idea about how your preparation is going to be right okay okay if you want okay just like uh, a summary okay just a summary of the intermediate filaments come on tell me how many types of intermediate filaments are there how the questions will be asked how many types of intermediate filaments three types what are they microtubules microfilaments as well as intermediate filaments what are the strongest the strongest is microtubules who is most abundant most abundant is intermediate filaments okay so which filaments are dynamic which filaments are dynamic which means they will grow along with the cell growth they will also grow sir along with the cell size they will also grow what are that dynamic dynamic are microtubules as well as microfilaments actin is an example of actin actin is an example of microfilament okay microfilament what are the monomeric molecules what are the like the subunits what are the subunits sir? in in an actin filament what are the subunits the g actin globular actin forms the filamentous actin globular actin forms the filamentous actin right now vimentin is present in fibroblast desmin is present in skeletal muscles keratin is present in epithelial cells in astrocytes glial fibrillary acidic protein like this there are so many intermediate filaments so many so many intermediate filaments are there but here i am talking a few okay important ones i have discussed okay now so what are the two molecular motors that i have discussed with you two molecular motors the two molecular motors are dynein and kinesin the dynein and kinesin they will actually walk sir by using the energy they will actually walk one from positive terminal to the negative terminal and other from negative terminal to positive terminal retrograde transport is done by dr dr retrograde transport is done by dynein anterograde transport anterograde transport is done by kinesin okay anterograde transport is done by kinesin sir okay positive to negative okay so after this now let's begin with the topic of membrane transport okay or you can understand it like transport across the cell membrane okay transport across the membranes okay now my question to you basic okay sir the basic thing from your class 11th and 12th i have i hope already you have studied so tell me how many types of transport are there come on guys how many types of transport are there there are two types of transport okay there are two types what are the two types of transport active transport and passive transport okay transport is going to be two types active transport passive transport now tell me what is the difference sir what is the difference between active transport and passive transport in active transport okay in active transport atp is involved energy is involved in active transport okay atp is involved energy is involved in passive transport no energy is involved no atp okay no atp is required for the transport of substances okay energy is required energy is not required for what energy for the transport of the substances energy is required and energy is not required okay now my question to you sir in active transport may why energy is involved why atp is required okay why atp is required okay any idea why atp is required why because in active transport the substances are moving from right substances are moving from where to where substances are moving from low concentration to high concentration 
low concentration to, to show you a true low concentration to high concentration low concentration to high concentration so the substances are moving from low concentration to high concentration now you have studied your physics right everyone knows substance will move from high concentration to low concentration substances usually move from high concentration to low concentration then there is no need of any energy but if you want to move a substance from low concentration to high concentration that is against Again, is what? Again, is concentration gradient. Again, is the concentration gradient you are moving the substances. So, energy is required. You need to give the energy to move the substances. In passive transport, exactly opposite thing. Substances are moving from high concentration to low concentration. Okay, substances are moving from high concentration to low concentration simply see if substance will move from high concentration to low concentration there is no need of any energy but if you want a substance to move from low concentration to high concentration low to high you need to give the energy sir you need to give the energy but if a substance is moving from high concentration to low concentration there is no need of energy no need of any energy simply it will come okay same is true with the electrons also i hope you have shared this in your like you know chemistry okay from if an electron is moving from lower orbit to higher orbit you have to give the energy, but the same electron when it is coming from higher orbit to lower orbits, the energy is going to be released. Okay? Okay, so done. Now, let's begin with the active transport. How many types of active transport are there? Just come on, guys. Any idea how many types of active transport are there? Do you have any idea how many types of active, tra active transports are there? Uh, Rithik, you are asking something, but I don't know what exactly you are asking because I'm very much uh, like, you know, poor in Hindi, sir. Like, I little, little aata tha Hindi. Toda, toda aata. Okay, I'm not very good with the Hindi. Okay. I'm from Hyderabad, sir. I'm from Hyderabad. Uh, if you ask something in Telugu, I can answer. But like, you know, I, yes, I can speak in Hindi, but not much. Okay. But anyway, there are two types of active transport. Two types. There are two types of active transport. What are they? Primary active transport. Ah, he's asking. He is asking me that I'm going to teach this uh, these uh, things again in Bishkek. Yes, of course, of course. Okay, of course, I'm going to teach you these uh, things again, but in a in a more detailed way and more exam oriented way. Okay, more like you know how the questions are going to be asked in the exam. Okay, like that. So two types. Primary. active transport and secondary active transport so what is primary active transport what is the difference between primary active transport and secondary active transport okay most probably if you are lucky guys if you are lucky guys if you are like fate is like you know if you are having a good fate and good luck then most probably you will give you will be giving the fmg exam someone is asking okay but if something goes wrong, next exam will come. But we know, we never, like, you know, right, as of now, there is no 100% pakka clarity that whether there will be FMG exam or next exam. From what I think, according to the latest information, most probably it will be FMG exam only. No next. FMG exam only. Okay. Till 2028, FMG exam only. Okay. So, primary active transport means direct use of energy. Direct use of energy. Then what is the example of secondary active transport? In secondary active transport, there is indirect use of energy. There is direct use of energy as well as indirect use of energy. If the energy is directly involved, if the energy is directly involved at the site of transport, I will show you. If the energy is directly involved at the site of transport, it is called as, it's called as a primary active transport. Then what is secondary active transport, sir? Energy is involved. Energy is used. But indirectly, indirectly. Okay? I will give the examples also. See, the examples of primary active transport. Okay, what are the examples of primary active transport? The examples of primary active transport are, uh, sir, when will you launch the Procyon app? 
app will be released by december okay app will be uh, released uh, december or even before december okay so primary active transport example sir sodium potassium atps okay sodium potassium atps now this is the one transporter which you will listen as a doctor till life long sir till your life long life long you will listen about this sodium potassium atps okay now what is this sodium potassium atps what it is doing let me tell you okay it's an example of primary active transport means there is a direct use of energy energy in the form of what energy in the form of atp energy in the form of atp now look here i am showing you for you okay for you i am a very kind person i am donating one cell okay i am donating my, my cell sir okay now i have donated my cell for you see this is my cell okay now just tell me inside the cell inside the cell which concentration is more sodium concentration or potassium concentration your cells are bags of inside the cell which ions are more what do you think okay which cell which ions are more potassium yes there are lots and lots of potassium inside the cell cells are bags of potassium now my question to you sir how this potassium came into the cell how how more potassium is there inside the cell outside the cell outside the cell there is more sodium sodium is more outside the cell potassium is less inside the cell sorry uh, sodium is there more outside the cell potassium is there more inside the cell okay now how this is maintained how this is maintained is dekho now on the cell surface now i am showing you one protein okay this is actually protein sir okay now this pink color thing or the violet color thing what it will do you know continuously throughout the day 24 by 7 what it will do is it's having one work it will take the atp okay by breaking down this atp it breaks the atp whenever the atp is broken energy is energy is released okay energy is released by using this energy do you know what happens sir potassium will be brought into the cell two potassium ions are going to be brought into the cell three sodium ions are going to go out of the cell three sodium will go out two potassium will come in okay so three sodium will go out of the cell two potassium is coming in so during this process who is involved atp is involved atp is involved now my question to you sir substances are moving or not yes across the membrane sir substances are moving across the cell membrane okay energy is involved atp is involved directly or indirectly directly at that side itself by using the energy sodium and potassium are moving now my question to you why energy is involved why energy is involved because see already inside the cell you have more potassium okay already inside the cell you have more more potassium okay now the potassium is coming into the cell sir dekho outside the cell potassium is less outside the cell potassium is less so now the potassium is moving from low concentration to high concentration already in the cell potassium is more okay so that's why as the substance as the potassium is moving against the concentration gradient energy is involved same is true with the sodium also already outside the cell more sodium is there more sodium is there inside the cell less sodium is there so sodium is moving from low concentration to high concentration sodium is moving from low concentration to high concentration that's why energy is involved okay so the name of this molecule the name of this molecule this is called as the name of this molecule it is called as sodium right let me show you the different color which color green color let's take green color sodium potassium atps okay so sodium potassium atps now why is the name sodium potassium atps because it is moving sodium and potassium sodium out of the cell potassium into the cell and what is this name atps it breaks down the atp it breaks down the atp you understood now question that will come in your exam okay sir so what is the coupling ratio of sodium potassium atps 
What is the coupling ratio of sodium potassium in EBS? See, coupling ratio means, come on guys, coupling ratio is x and agarwal 3 is to 2. What is that? 3 sodium are going out in exchange for 2 potassium. In exchange for 2 potassium. 3 sodium molecules are going out in exchange for 2 potassium. So, the coupling ratio is 3 is to 2. Okay. Next. Sir, this sodium potassium ADPS, no, they go. This sodium potassium ADPS, where it is present? It is present in the cell membrane. What exactly it is? It is a protein. Okay, let me write first. Sodium potassium ATPS. So, the sodium potassium ATPS, it's a protein present in the cell membrane. Okay, it's a protein present in the cell membrane. Now, my question to you. So, it's a protein, huh? Protein, eh? yes, true. So, how many types of proteins are there in the cell membrane? Tell me, how many types of proteins are there in the cell membrane? You know, sir, in the cell membrane, there are two types of proteins. One is the integral protein. Other is the peripheral protein. Now, this sodium potassium ATPase, it is an example of integral protein or is it an example of peripheral protein? Now, question to you. Now, it's an example of integral protein or is it an example of peripheral protein? Come on, guys. Come on, who is going to answer first? Is it Kiran? Is it Agarwal? Is it Mehnaz? Is it Funmode? Funmode? What do you think? Is it integral protein or is it peripheral protein? Ah, Funmode. Wrong. You are wrong, Funmode. Why it is a peripheral protein? It's an integral protein, man. It's an integral protein. It's present throughout the cell membrane. Okay? See, this... Sodium potassium ATPase, it's an example of integral protein. Okay, it's an example of integral protein. Okay. Now, one more thing. One more thing. Sir, okay, integral protein. Next. Now, in yesterday's class, I have explained you. In yesterday's class, so the integral protein, it can be a channel. It can be a channel which is allowing the substances in and out. It can be a channel, simple channel, pore, hole. Or it can be a carrier protein. Carrier protein means what in yesterday's class I have explained you. Carrier protein means it will change its shape. Okay, it will change its shape while transporting the substances. Carrier proteins will undergo conformational change. It will flip, I have explained you. Right? Okay, now tell me. So, the sodium potassium ATPase, it's an example of integral protein, okay. But is it a channel protein? Or is it a carrier? Yes, of course, sodium, potassium, they are getting transported. Okay, so sodium is coming, the sodium is going out of the cell, potassium is coming into the cell. Transport is happening with the help of the sodium potassium ADPase. Now, is it an example of channel or is it an example of carrier? What do you think? Fun mode? Excellent, excellent, you are true. Okay, 90% of the students think that's a channel, sir. Ah, it's like a hole. It's just like a small hole in the cell membrane. Uh, so, potassium is coming in, sodium is going out. No. It's a carrier protein. Okay, it's a carrier protein, sir. So, the sodium potassium ATPase, it's a carrier. Okay. So, usually, even fifth year students, those who are about to go to the exams, even they think, ah, sodium potassium ATPase, sodium is going out, potassium is coming, it's a channel. No, it's not a channel. It's a carrier protein. Okay, it's a carrier protein, which means, let me, let me tell you. First, it's a carrier. Sodium potassium ATPase is a carrier. Okay. Now, let me explain you this little in detail. Okay. Little in detail, sir. Very important for the exam. What is this? Is the cell membrane. Okay. Imagine this is the cell membrane. Strip is the cell membrane. Okay. Now, in this cell membrane, I am showing you sodium potassium ATPase. For example, this is the sodium potassium ATPase. This is the protein. Imagine this is the sodium potassium ATPS. This protein, imagine. That's the sodium potassium ATPS. So, this is the alpha subunit. This is the beta subunit. Actually, the structure is not going to be like that. It's a total different thing. There will be two alpha subunits, two beta subunits. Total different thing. But for understanding purpose. Uh, sir, this is alpha subunit. Hai. This is beta subunit. Hai. Okay. This is outside the cell. This is inside the cell. Okay, inside the cell. That is the cyto cytoplasm. Towards the side of the cytoplasm. Now, do you know first what happens? First, do you know what happens? Sir, first, here, sodium will come and bind, sir. One sodium molecule will come and bind. 
where towards the intracellular side, towards the intracellular side, and sodium molecule will come and bind here. And ATP, so ATP will also come and bind here. Sodium and ATP are binding here. Now, by breaking this ATP, now this ATP will be broken down. So, alpha subunit is having the ATPs activity, the alpha subunit of sodium potassium ATPs. The entire thing is sodium potassium ATPs, alpha subunit, beta subunit. But sodium is binding to what? Alpha subunit. ATP is binding to what? Alpha subunit. Where? Inside the cell. Inside the cell. Now, this ATP is going to be broken down. Now, do you know what happens? Now, by using this energy, the alpha subunit, it will flip, sir. Means it is undergoing shape change, conformational change. Now the alpha subunit, it will flip outside. So, now what happens? The sodium, for example, Deko, now imagine this is the alpha subunit. Now it has flipped, flipped. So now the sodium was released out. The sodium is released out of the cell. Now what happens? Is, now potassium will come and bind here, sir. Potassium, it will come and bind here. This is alpha subunit only. Now potassium will come and bind here. Now the alpha subunit will come back to its original position. Okay. Now it will come back to its original position. So the potassium will be brought in. Okay. The potassium is going to be brought into the cell. So it is undergoing shape change. Shape is going to be changed. So that's why the sodium potassium ATP is not just a channel. It's a carrier protein. Carrier protein. So now my question to you. In sodium potassium ATPase, how many subunits are there? There are two subunits. What are they? Alpha subunit, beta subunit. Which subunit is important? Now you tell me guys. Which subunit is important? Alpha subunit. So the alpha subunit is also called as regulatory subunit. This was the question asked. Which subunit is the regulatory subunit? It's the alpha subunit. It's a regulatory subunit. Done. Okay, alpha subunit is a regulatory subunit. Now, tell me. My question to you. Sir, so in the sodium potassium ATPase, ATP is involved or not? Yes, ATP is involved. So, it's an example of primary active transport or secondary, sorry. Now, it's an example of active transport or passive transport. Def definitely, ATP is involved, so active transport. Now, is it an example of primary active transport or secondary active transport? See, in sodium potassium ATPase, Energy is directly involved. So, it's an example of primary active transport. Okay. So, just know this for your lifelong, remember this point. Lifelong, remember this point. Note. Wherever you see the word ATPase, sodium potassium ATPase, calcium ATPase, proton ATPase, whenever you see this word ATPase, all of them are example of primary Active transport. Simple. Okay. So, wherever you see the word ATPase, all of them are going to be examples of primary active transport. Then. So, calcium ATPase, okay, proton ATPase, sodium potassium ATPase, all this. Okay. Then. Now, let's discuss about the secondary active transport. Secondary active transport. Okay, secondary active transport. Now, just tell me guys, in secondary active transport, energy is involved or not? ATP is involved. Yes, ATP is involved. But indirectly, indirectly ATP is involved. Okay, indirectly ATP is involved. Now, some students will get it out. Sir, how sir? How can you give me any example of the secondary active transport? Okay, yes, I will tell you. See. One example, the famous example, I will show you. Okay. See, now, so this is a blood vessel. Now, okay, let me show you the blood vessel with the red color. Okay. Now, you guys, if you are uh, like, you know, really intelligent, you should answer. Okay, what is this blood vessel? What is the structure that I am drawing? Okay. Just try to answer yourself. If you are intelligent, you should answer. What is the structure that I am drawing?
What is the structure that I am drawing, sir? Any idea? That's a nephron. Yes, yes, yes. Abdul, you are true. That's a nephron. Yeah, it's not a snaps. It's not a snaps. That's a nephron. You, you have said right. Bowman's capsule, Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb of loop of Henle, ascending limb of loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. That's a nephron. Okay, that's a nephron. See, now, in your, this is the blood vessel. So, this is the glomerular, glomerular capillary. Okay, that's a glomerular capillary. Now, here, who is there? Sir, in the glomerular capillary, blood is there. Okay, blood is going to be present here. Okay? Here is going to be the blood. Blood, plasma, RBC, WBC, platelets, glucose, everything is going to be present. Now, here is the glucose molecule. Deco. Here is the glucose molecule. Now, my question to you, think logically and tell me. Sir, glucose molecules which are present in this blood, are they going to be filtered into the nephrons or not? Will the glucose... Will this glucose molecule, will it filter into the nephrons or not? What do you think? Glucose, important substance. Is it going to be filtered into the nephrons? Is it going to filter into the nephron? What do you think? Filters are 100% filters, no doubt. Students will think glucose is not filtered. No, glucose is filtered into your nephrons. So, glucose is filtered. Okay. Yes, metroid, metriot. Whatever. Yes, glucose is filtered but reabsorbed. It is going to reabsorb, sir. Okay. Not only glucose, sodium is going to be filtered, chlorine is going to be filtered, okay. Water is going to be filtered. So much. Okay. So glucose is filtered. Okay. Now look here. This part of the nephron is called as a PCT, means proximal convoluted. Tubule. Okay, it's a proximal convoluted tubule here. The name is proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, proximal convoluted tubule. The first part of the nephron. I, I shouldn't say first part. Bowman's capsule is the first part. After Bowman's capsule, the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Deco. Now, this is an epithelial cell, sir. Okay, this is the, these are the epithelial cells. In the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, now, see, first itself I am telling you, first itself I am telling you, Deco. the sodium concentration inside the cell is very, very less, the sodium inside the cell is very, very less, sir. The amount of sodium which is present inside the cell is very less. Sir, this proximal convoluted tubules, they have high amounts of glucose. Glucose is more. More when compared to what? More, okay. When compared to what? See, here in the lumen, this is the lumen, sir. Okay, that's the nephron. That's the nephron. That's the lumen of the nephron. See, in the lumen, there is less glucose present. But here inside the cell, there is more glucose present. Sir, here, more sodium is present, sir. Here, yeah, more sodium is present. But inside the cell, there is less sodium. Inside the cell, there is less sodium. Now, tell me. Which substance can move? Which substance cannot move? Can you tell me? Which substances can move easily? Which substance cannot move? Guys, now think logically and answer. Come on, use your brain. Substances will move from high concentration to low concentration. Okay? Substances will move from high concentration. Sodium moves. Sodium can move. There is no problem for the sodium. Why? Because sodium, yes, it can move from high concentration to low concentration easily but glucose say glucose cannot move because glucose is less inside the lumen more inside the cell okay now deco you need to understand this listen when any substance is moving from high concentration to low concentration try to understand when any substance is moving from high concentration to low concentration it actually releases the energy sir Okay, it actually releases the energy. Okay? So, for example, imagine a ball. Imagine a ball. 
Now, if you want to move the ball like this to into the sky, if you want to move the ball up, you need to give the energy. You need to give the energy to move the ball up. But when the same ball, when it is falling down, it releases the energy, sir. If you want to feel the energy, go on, just look like this. It will come and fall, then you can feel the energy. Okay, in the same way, simple. When the ball is falling, it gives off the energy, kinetic energy. Okay, so here the sodium is moving from high concentration to low concentration. Now, it will release the energy, sir. By using this energy, by using this energy, this glucose molecule is going to move inside the cell. Okay, this glucose molecule is going to move inside the cell. Okay, so this is how glucose is reabsorbed. Now tell me, in your nephrons, MCQs, now you have to answer. Glucose is reabsorbed along with, along with, glucose is reabsorbed along with, this question was asked many times in the FMG exam, along with sodium. Glucose is reabsorbed along with sodium. It's an example of, it's an example of, which type of transport, active transport or passive transport? It's an example of secondary active transport. Okay, not primary active transport, it's an example of secondary active transport. Okay, secondary active transport. Energy is involved, involved. ATP is involved, involved. Now, let's show you the real thing. Let's show you the exact thing. Like, you know, where ATP is involved. ATP is involved, sir. Energy is involved. Do you know where? First of all, my question to you. My question to you. Sir, glucose is coming into the cell because of what? Sodium is coming into the cell, sir. Sodium is coming into the cell. So, along with sodium, glucose is also coming into the cell. But my question to you, my question to you, why sodium is coming into the cell? Sir, sodium, it is coming into the cell because sodium will move from high concentration to low concentration. Sodium can come. Sodium is moving from high concentration to low concentration. Now, my question. Who keeps the sodium less inside the cell? Why, why sodium is less inside the cell? Why sodium is less inside the cell? Because, listen, because of this. Because of this. Now, what is this? Sir, it takes the sodium. It is throwing the sodium out. Three sodium will go out in an exchange for two potassium. Three sodium are going out of the cell in exchange for two potassium. So, sodium is continuously, sodium is constantly getting out of the cell. The sodium is constantly getting out of the cell. So, inside the cell, the sodium levels are going less. So, the intracellular sodium concentration is kept less. So, that's why sodium then enters into the cell without any problem. Now, what is the name of this transporter, sir? The name of this transporter is, you know it already, sodium, potassium, ATPase. Sodium, potassium, ATPase. Now, here ATP is involved. Here ATP is involved. Because of the sodium potassium ATPase, because of the sodium potassium ATPase, the intracellular sodium is kept low. So, here ATP is involved. Now, just think logically. Just think logically. If the, if the sodium potassium ATPase, if it is not working, if that sodium potassium ATPase, if it is not working, what happens? Intracellular sodium concentration increases. Sodium is not going out of the cell. So, inside the cell, sodium concentration increases. If inside the cell, if sodium concentration increases, do you think this sodium can enter into the cell? No. Do you think glucose can come into the cell? No. No, sir. Okay, not possible. Right? So, glucose reabsorption. Okay, glucose reabsorption in the PCT. Okay, glucose reabsorption in PCT. It is an example of secondary active transport. Okay. Okay. Means energy is involved, ATP is involved. Okay, where ATP is involved? ATP is utilized by sodium, potassium, ATPase. Okay, you understood? So these are this is how you have to study, sir. These are the questions, this is how the questions are being asked. Okay. Let me tell you, like you know, as a real doctor, sir, I am going to be a doctor, right? How this concept is going to be helpful for me? I will tell you. See, take So now tell me, this is a blood vessel. 
the glomerular capillary blood vessel. Now, what is this one? Bowman's capsule. Okay. What is the structure? Proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal convoluted tubule cell. Now, here is one epithelial cell. Let's draw one epithelial cell here. Okay. Now, see, sodium will come into the cell, right? See, actually here, there is a transporter, sir. There is a transporter, actually. Okay. So, through this a transporter, through this a transporter, the sodium is coming into the cell. Okay, let me show you the different color. Sodium is coming... Uh, green. The so, sodium is coming into the cell. When sodium is coming into the cell, along with the sodium, even glucose molecules will come into the cell. Okay. So, we, you have studied the same thing. You, you know this, sir. Okay, you already know this. Sir, sodium is moving into the cell. When sodium is coming, along with the sodium, even glucose will come into the cell. Okay. So, this is called as what? This is called as sodium glucose co-transport. Sodium glucose co-transport. Now tell me, sodium glucose co-transport occurs in? Sodium glucose co-transport occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule. It's an example of, it's an example of secondary active transport. But that's not what my question is. That's not what my question is, sir. See, this red color thing, what is the name of this red color protein? What is the name of that red color protein? Okay, red color thing which is allowing the sodium and glucose into the cell. See, that red color thing is called as SGLT type 2. SGLT type 2. Okay, what exactly is that? SGLT type 2. Now, students will scratch their head. Sir, what is this SGLT? Kya hai? SGLT kya hai? Sodium glucose transporter it is transporting the sodium and glucose there are many types of sglt1 two different types are there so sglt type 2 is present in now tell me sglt type 2 is present where sir sodium glucose transporter type 2 it is a present in the proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron okay so sglt type 2 it is present in pct okay, it is present in the proximal convoluted tubule now, as a doctor, what is important, sir? Okay, I want to be a doctor. As a doctor, what is important? Now, if, see, if by using a drug, I am going to use a drug, sir. Okay, I am going to use a drug. Now, by using this drug, I have blocked this. Okay? I have blocked this. There is a drug which will come and block the sodium glucose transporters. Blocked. Now, tell me. Glucose is going to be reabsorbed now. So, now do you think this glucose is going to be reabsorbed? No, glucose is not going to be reabsorbed. Glucose is not getting reabsorbed back into the blood, sir. Glucose is not reabsorbed. Where all this glucose will go? Sir, this glucose, it will go out in the urine. Now, in which condition, sir? We don't want glucose. In which condition we don't want glucose? Diabetes. Okay? Diabetes. Sir, in diabetes mellitus, have you studied about diabetes mellitus in class 11th and 12th? What is diabetes? Diabetes. High levels of glucose, diabetes mellitus, high levels of glucose is there in the body. We don't want more glucose. So what we have to do? We have to remove the glucose out of the body. How can we remove the glucose out of the body? Sir, by using a drug. See, if you block this sodium glucose transport blocker, okay, SGLT2 blocker, there is a drug. Okay, so SGLT, SGLT type 2 blockers. Okay, SGLT type 2 blockers. If you block this SGLT type 2, glucose is lost in urine. Okay, glucose is going to be lost in the urine, sir. So, what happened to the blood levels of glucose? The blood levels of glucose will come down. You can treat, you can treat diabetes mellitus by this way, by blocking so SGLT type 2 blockers. Now, one more question to you, one more question to you. Now, tell me, sir, unnecessarily now, Glucose is lasting in the urine, right? It is getting lost in the urine, right? The glucose is getting lost in the urine. Can you tell me one side effect? If I use this drug, SGLT type 2 blocker, okay, if you want to know, if you are so much enthusiastic, sir, what is that drug? What is that drug? Sir, the name of this drug, sir, Canna. Canna. Glyphlozin. It's a drug. Canna glyphlozin. Or DAPA. 
Glyphlozin. Canaglyphlozin, dapaglyphlozin. There are many in many, like you know, canaglyphlozin, dapaglyphlozin, empaglyphlozin. So many things are there. These drugs, canaglyphlozin, what are they? Sir, these are the drug names. Okay, these are the drug names. Canaglyphlozin, dapaglyphlozin. What they will do? They will block SGLT2. They are SGLT2 blockers. Now, what is the side effect? Can you tell me what is the side effect? So now the glucose is lost in the urine. Glucose is going out in the urine. As the glucose is going out in the urine, what happens? Sir, by using this glucose, microorganisms can grow in the urinary tract. Microorganisms can grow in the urethra. Microorganisms can grow in the bladder, ureters. So urinary tract infections can occur. Okay, UTI. Yes, one more, you are true. The urinary tract infections may develop. Okay, so the answer. So the two types of active transport are completed. Primary active transport, secondary active transport. Example I have given you. What is the example of secondary active transport? Sodium glucose co-transport. Let me tell you one basic thing, one basic thing. Lifelong remember. Note. Wherever you see the word, wherever you see the word ATPs, Already I have discussed, it's all our example of primary active transport. Whenever you see sodium, potassium, ATPs, calcium, ATPs, proton, ATPs, all of them are examples of primary active transport, direct use of energy. Whenever you see the word co-transporter, okay, co-transporter are symporters. Symport means what? Sodium and glucose are moving in the same direction, right? They go. Sodium and glucose, they are moving in the same direction. Both are moving in one single direction. Both are moving into the cell. If two substances are moving into the cell, that is called as a symport or co-transport. Both are same. Okay. So, whenever you see the word, symporters, co-transporters are antiporters. Substances moving in the opposite direction. One into the cell, one out of the cell. Okay. So, whenever you see the word, the word is important, sir. Antiporter. Now, here some students will confuse. Sir, sodium, potassium, ATPA, sodium is going out of the cell, potassium is coming into the cell. Sodium, potassium, ATPA is, remember ATPA is there. So, don't think sodium, potassium, ATPA is an example of exchanger. Okay, that's a pump. That's a ATPA, primary active transport. So, whenever you see the word antiporter or exchanger, all of them are examples of secondary active transport. Okay, so primary active transport, the secondary active transport are completed. Okay, for this day, I hope this will be enough. Okay, I am not like, you know, prolonging the classes because we have 10 classes are there. Slowly, slowly, I will make you understand what is the general physiology. Okay, the blood, the skeletal muscle, important point about the nerves, smooth muscle, secondary messenger system. Okay, all this we will discuss gradually, gradually. Okay. So, this will be enough for today guys. In tomorrow's class, we will discuss about the passive transport. Okay, what are the examples of the passive transport? Examples of the vesicular transport. Okay, how that should be integrated with the medicine topics as a doctor, how it is important. Okay, that will be discussed in the tomorrow's class. Hope this will be help helpful. If you have any doubts, guys, if you have any personal doubts, sir, I couldn't understand this. You can always message me. Double seven eight zero seven. 82243. For any doubt, you can always message me to this number. This is my WhatsApp number. Okay, this is my personal WhatsApp number. You can message me anytime regarding any doubts. Okay, hope everything is clear. So, shall we meet tomorrow? Shall we meet tomorrow? Okay, bye bye. Bye bye, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.